Well, I'll never get used to how quick that startup is. Hello, Chicago, and hello, Michael, who will be back shortly. And at some point, you'll hear his voice in the disembodied chat, but not right now. So, this week, the community voted. And so far, one of the community is here to watch. That's you, Chicago. Well done. <laughs> anyway, the, security, the uh, community asked for Clinchfield out of all of the routes that I presented options for and different games I presented. So, here we go. We're going to play Limited Power Scenario. Now, this scenario has always defeated me. I've never finished it. Is this time going to be different? Dunno. We shall see. Now, first up, important, what loco did we get? 8.13. Well, that doesn't bode well. <laughs> ah, sigh. Okay, we're going to run down the line to... Nora Spur. And pick up coal and return to Alan Storage. Well, getting down shouldn't be too hard. But let's start setting up. We have two locomotives. And let's put it into freight... That's already in first service, it's cut in. What about the independent? It's in full application, we'll leave that there for the moment. Uh, let's get the reverser into forward. I won't put our headlights on yet because it'll blind that bloke, but we can start everything else. Control and fuel, generator, engine run, number lights, why not? Class lights, sure. I don't think we can turn anything else on in here. All right, he's gone now, so we can turn our headlights on as well. Let's just go for headlights dim. Chicago says only CRR 800 survives. Um, not 100% certain on that one. CRR 800 is the only one that runs. But I'm not sure it's the only one that survives. There's actually a lot of F7s out there. And all our lights and things are on. We don't have our headlights on yet. And we should go into... Parallel... No... Parallel, that's what we want. Yeah, cool. Okay. And we'll get the go in a moment. Alright, we are right to go, more or less. And thank you for the scenario that tells me everything I need to know. We can put our headlights on full bore now. And by the sounds of the crashing going on behind me, we're going to leave whether I power up or not. Eventually. Here we go. Nice easy start. Now that the whole train's moving, let's come up a couple of notches. No bell. We're not in a yard, young man. Besides, this is the 1950s. Not even the four honk rule applied in the 1950s. Now, interestingly enough, about 10 minutes before this stream, I had forgotten something really important. I hadn't switched away from the beta. So I panically have switched away from the beta, which was rather a large download. So we're very fortunate that it made it. You have something interesting? Look at that. I think Clinchfield might have had an asset update in the public version. 
We're about to go into a tunnel, so we'll get dragged into the cab in a moment. But look at that. That's nice. The lettering's all nice and clear. Very cool. I should throttle back a little, because I'm starting to pick up a little bit too much speed. Here's our little caboose. You don't have to turn on anything in the other locos. They are controlled by this loco, and if you... I don't know if I'll be able to get there from this camera angle, actually. Maybe with the three cam I can show you why you don't need to. See all these things? These control the other locomotive. So there's electrical and air connections. So you don't actually have to do anything in the other locomotive, as long as it's all set up, ready to go. So I don't know who's telling you you need to turn things on in the other locos, because you simply don't. They are controlled. Yeah, we can speed up again. How lucky are us? We do have a yellow signal coming up. I don't want to go too hard. I did see someone the other day comment that um, they thought you had to turn on everything, and you just, well, don't. <laughs> if they're directly connected. Now, if they're the locos down the back, in the game you don't have to do it, but in reality there would be a crew in those locos that would set them up. So you could do it, it doesn't make any difference at all. But you could do it if you really wanted to. No, not when they're directly connected. They'll go in there and they'll check. They'll do their daily checks of the locomotives and that will involve all sorts of things like a power-up test and all sorts of stuff. But not while they're out on the road. And this guy's out on the road, forget. I mean, he's already there. He's not starting in a yard. Hello, Mark B. How are you? How is New Zealand this fine day? There's a difference, Chicago, is this train didn't start in a yard. So everything's already set up. You're out on the road. You were just sitting in a passing siding. Let's get rid of that frame rate counter. It's getting a bit steep, isn't it? I've spent the... Uh about the last 12 hours of my gameplay in Clinchfield, because I'm working on a little project. And this is a bit of a... a bit of a long shot. But I'm looking for someone that actually worked on Clinchfield anywhere from 1950 to about 1985. Anywhere in that time frame. So it's about 35 year time frame. And I'm looking for someone who would like to be interviewed for a future video. So if someone watching this knows someone, or is someone, who worked on Clinchfield, get them to get in touch. The easiest way to do that is via my website, which is Steam and Engine of Australia, which is www.steamengine.com.au. Mark says it's overcast today in New Zealand, but his new GPU is making it sunnier. Oh, fantastic. What did you get? It's always a good day when you've got a new GPU. Chicago says he doesn't care because you're an engineer guide. So thanks to your argument balance rates of being an engineer, I don't go mucking around turning the engine control circuit breaker switches. Yep, if you're starting in a yard, you would, and the train hasn't been used before. So if you're just taking over from another crew, you wouldn't do this. But if you're starting in a yard, and it doesn't really matter what railway you're on, if you're the first person in that set of locomotives for the day, you'll check them out. And each railroad or railway has a different set of procedures for what you should and should not do as part of that check. Some railroads you'll have to do a complete test that does everything, including powering a locomotive up and taking it through its notches and making sure its brakes can hold it and all sorts of things. In other railroads, it's um, push the on button and drive. So, different everywhere. I know in the preserve railway I'm on, when we're preparing a diesel for use, we have a quite long checklist that we go through. There's a lot of actions to do. 
you got a 6700 XT. That's cool. And how's it going for you? Enjoying the frame rates? And Chicago's mum has found a retired Amtrak engineer on Facebook, but it was the engineer's wave, maybe wife, though, as well as Norfolk Southern conductor in Indiana who wants to become a truck driver. That's cool. I'm not actually on Facebook. Well, that's not quite true. I am on Facebook, but I don't use it. I'm only there because when I got rid of my account, Someone else made an account in my name and was pretending to be me. And at that time, I was um, part of a large worldwide youth movement. And that person was saying some things that were really poor. So I got the account killed and had mine recreated. Just so that it would exist as a placeholder. I'm glad your FPS is good, Mark. No, I'm looking for someone that actually worked on the railroad, Chicago. I want a real engineer. Actually, I'd settle for any crew member. It doesn't have to be an engineer. It'd preferably be an engineer, but it doesn't have to be. I would even consider someone from the CSX era if I couldn't get anybody else. But I per pref preferably want Clinchfield people because I want someone who operated. The F7s and the others. Particularly the F7s. Every time I run this route I remember how... Um, much its gradients change. And don't forget, Chicago, that the operating rules for a driver, or an engineer as you call them in your part of the world, they um, are different everywhere. Every railway or railroad has their own set of rules. I think I'm not keeping up with this gradient very well. DJ's Trains, you reckon? Uh, 1999, so he's a bit recent. Because I want someone that's worked on the Clinchfield route. He could have, because Clinchfield opened again in 2015. Sorry, 2017 Clinchfield opened again. But not all of the branches aren't open, only the main line. Why aren't my hidey thing keys working? Hmm. Hmm. There we go. My hidey keys weren't working because I'm not using the right hidey keys. For a change, the game picked a nice viewpoint. Lots of rail fans hide out in the grass on the side of the tracks. Hello, just singers. Welcome along. Today we're playing the limited power scenario on Clinchfield by community request. And I have to say, it's been a while since I touched it in the public version. I've got to say, it's looking nice. Text is nice and smooth. Very pleasant.
probably doesn't hurt that I've actually got default any settings. Ooh, I hope that switch is set straight. Looks like it is. DJ's Trains has interviewed a retired Conrail engineer and B&O dispatcher. Fair enough. I actually do know some Amtrak people. Chicago reckons I muck around like a child. What's wrong with that? motion blur actually helps with the um, smoothness of the graphics to be honest it's less stuttery with motion blur turned on happy mother's day to your mum Chicago assuming Americans celebrated on the same day I suppose out of the people watching, who has motion blur turned on and who has it turned off? I think it's turned on in this version. This would be life in these mountains. Waiting for trains. Jasingas has motion blur turned off. I always think it's a little bit funny with the wheels is the uh, axles that become that are square when you first see them and then they become round I always thought that was kind of funny I just saw the caboose ones do it then Nora 33 Mark B has motion blur on. Almost got hit in the face with a tree. So who's looking forward to Spirit of Steam? Sit on the other side, really, shouldn't I? There we go. Sit on the sunny side, it looks nicer. We just get hit in the face with grass. You think the locos look too big? You know, locos actually are big, like really big. Or do you think the spirit of steam locos look too big? Do we have a helper today? We do. Hello, helper. You gonna do any work today? 
No? Okay. What are you going to do when Spirit of Steam comes along? You'll have to help then. You have to shovel coal. Because you know I'm not going to do it. Chicago wants me to do some TSW2 rail fanning and let him narrate the videos if I make mistakes. So only if I make mistakes, right? So if I don't make any mistakes, you have to be quiet. I have a faint suspicion you probably couldn't be quiet. I've tried the rail fanning videos on this channel before. They're not that popular with my audience. I know they work quite nicely for you. Your audience likes them. But they, um, they don't rate terribly well in the analytics, so I tend not to do them. You always love the way the grass grows when you have the default loading settings on. Grass and flowers just grow as you drive past them. It's kind of funny. Tsingus is waiting for some German steam locos. Not too much into steam stuff anyway, and even less into British. That's fair enough. Everybody has their likes. I'm a bit of an all-rounder. I quite like to have a play with all different routes and different locomotives. There's some quite impressive German steam engines. And they're quite distinctive too, because they're most of the time very large very black very red underframes and wheels it's um, a distinctive look and Chicago has plans for rail fanning for Boston Sprinter, Sherman Hill and probably what he thinks will be the most well liked Horseshoe Curve Horseshoe Curve did rate pretty well on this channel for a while but it started to peter out and Mark B is looking forward to Spirit of Steam. Not that surprised, given that you um, play with the JA. As long as your driving skills improve over your attempts in Train Simulator. Yeah, it'll be very interesting to see what it uh, ends up being like. I'm definitely running the default any settings because I'm watching this fence drawer in front of me. And its lods aren't quite right. They should be a little further away. That's okay. I did recently completely uninstall TSW because... Switching back and forth between beta and public killed it. Steam eventually um, patched itself to death. You know, they're not kidding about limited power here, because, you know, I'm not exactly in a low notch. We're not exactly going very fast. Not that you can tell easily with the whistle in the way. And Gesingers would like some Bundesbahn mainline stuff, and I hope I said that right. But there's a great variety with the small local lines that existed in the early days. There are lots of really cool engines in Germany. We've actually got one in our museum. We've got a Hunslet. That's quite a cool loco. It's um, quite different to anything else we've got. Unfortunately, the poor thing doesn't run. It's on the list, but it's a very long list. And Chicago's brought up something completely irrelevant, which wouldn't be like him at all about Peter Pan and Home Alone. So there you go. Coming up on another small yard. Switches appear to be set for us. Interestingly, on this route, or at least in this edition of it in the game, sometimes a yellow switch means that you're set straight ahead, and sometimes it means you're set for diverge, and I really wish it was consistent. It would make life much easier.
Here's a good spot for a camera, right in the middle of a track. I watched an interesting video earlier this morning of a Norfolk Southern train taking out a car that was on uh, on the tracks in the Appalachian Mountains in the middle of nowhere. You know what that driver's thinking? Get off the tracks, you wanker. What's our back loco? Eight oh seven. Excellent. anybody writing down all the car numbers in a little book I've seen people do that I've never quite understood it I'm used to doing it on the preserve railway I'm on because whenever we move cars we have to log their mileage because they get serviced by date and mileage whichever comes first It's a very nice morning here on the Clinchfield. See that first set of points was showing red for going straight and not diverging and this one's showing yellow. Go figure. Looks like there's some missing landscape on the left there. How's our speed going? Can I see it from here? 10. Wow. Just open the window too. I think we need some more notches. Can we open her window? I'd have to go over there. Hey, she disappeared. And I disappeared. Uh-oh. No one's in control. Maybe I better go back in. Ah, she's back. The Invisible Woman. So if I look in from this side, I'm not there, which is fair enough, because I'm outside now, but she's there. But if I look in from the other side, oops, there, no crew. Help. That'd be an interesting siding to use, really. I guess it's flat. Chicago says that NS9928 hit a 1967 GMC and the vehicle was damaged beyond repair. Yes, very much so. It was pushed off a cliff. So I wouldn't be at all surprised if it was a little beyond repair. Just a little. So we're almost at the first mine. 
and it wants me to leave some hoppers and we go to the siding leave some more hoppers and then we go to the tipple and we pick up some hoppers then we drop some hoppers off go via the tipple again and load up looks like we're doing the same hoppers multiple times that's okay looks like we're going to be doing a little bit of coal loading doesn't it and a little bit of shunting that's okay that'll make it interesting adding another locomotive is that that one maybe that's that one hmm Uh, 9928 steps were all bent, so I'm tipping it did hit the vehicle. If anybody wants to watch the video, have a look at the channel Delay in Block Productions. The guy who runs that does a nice job. Neil TB8, how are you? And yes, Chicago, that train did continue after it was um, checked, and the tracks were checked. So I probably shouldn't start powering off yet, even though we've only got a little while to go, because it'll stall. How are you, Neil TB8? Welcome. If you don't watch Neil TB8's view videos, and you probably should. You're playing Isle of Wight on Train Simulator. I don't have Isle of Wight on Train Simulator. Has it got the steam routes as well, or just the electric one? And that railway was updated soon. Re sorry, not soon, recently. They got um, new trains. And they had to realign the track and change some platforms and do all sorts of things. I've asked Rivet a couple of times if they're going to do it. Oh, I remember this mine. This is the floating mine. See how the left-hand side of it just floats until you get near it? Oh, it's got both railways. That's good. I must have a look at it then. Now, I always mess up the directions in this scenario. And I've had my carriages roll away on me more than once, which isn't supposed to happen in this game, but clearly it does. Uh, how's our route set? It is actually right. So let's keep the power on a little bit more though. Or we're not going to get through all of these curving points. Chicago's spruiking his own channel again. He's going to get people to vote on which routes to rail fan. Every time I play this scenario, I mess this up. So let's see if I get it right today. Not 
gonna make it. More power. Nearly there. must split your consist and start filling the cars up. The F7 at Kilgore Creek has been requested to assist you. That's the one we passed. Very good. Now I shall pay attention to what I'm told to do for a change. Uncouple the hoppers. Okay, then we've got to get out. So, independent. And let's drop you out. Put you in neutral. There we go. Our train is now safe. Go and uncouple some hoppers. Down we go. Head first. Must be uh, Amazon thieves nearby. Chicago says no troublesome trucks where they roll away laughing. This one. Okay. Clunk. And I'll do that thing that you'd never actually do, which is lean over the coupler. Get it to set off, apply a small amount of power to avoid rolling backwards and recoupling the wagons yes good plan let's go back in the cab when loading hoppers you need to keep a slow and controlled speed to allow the loader to correctly and safely load the hoppers apply a small amount of power to get moving and then move the throttle back to the idle position once you're traveling at no more than three miles per hour do you know that never actually works because you're going uphill and if you sit there and idle you just roll backwards through it Alright, here we are back at our little locomotives. Up, periscope. And we're going to leave the door open because I'm lazy. Alright, reverser. Genfield. Let's get some notches going. Let's release the independent. And now that we're powering, we can release the other one as well. well. Let's see how we go. Did we uncouple? Yay! And there's the other locomotive down the back there. Now, is our road set? Because that's a trick trap I often fall into. No, that one's okay. Good. We're going all the way to the end buffer by the looks of it. Which is fantastic. Yeah, I guess Mother's Day would be tomorrow for you. It is Sunday here. My mum's in hospitals. So I saw her the other day, so I won't be seeing her today. Because there's a limit to how often you're allowed to go in in COVID times. But we'll probably go and see my wife's mum this afternoon. After my wife gets back from work. And my kids remember that it's Mother's Day and do something nice for her. Where's the end of the track? Here it is. Say happy Mother's Day to your mother anyway. Give her a surprise. Bit more.
How can I tell you who's the oldest or the youngest if I don't say their names? I can just tell you one's older and one's younger. That should do, I think. Stop rolling back. There you go. Now, let's have a quick look on the map. Because what are we expected to be doing? We're going back down there and we're changing to the other track. And we're going to pull down alongside the cars that we had before. Very good. Let's go down the back for this. What? No, no, that's right. No, it's all good. feel. Using my independent brake on the locomotive just to help me control the speed of the consist. You certainly wouldn't do this out on the main line, but fine in uh, yards. Quite common. Could also use the dynamic brake, but by the time the thing spooled up, Uh, probably would have run away by then because dynamic brakes don't tend to work until you get above about 5 mile an hour this is the car set that I've had roll away before the other loco gets onto it. Hello, Johnny Maguire. Welcome. I'm glad you enjoy Quenchfield. It is a fun route. It's one of the prettiest, I think. Cargo says some passenger engineers release the automatic brakes and let the locomotive hold the whole consist, mostly at stations. Uh, they definitely do on flat stations, but they're not too likely to do that if they're on a slope. I think this is actually about the point that we want to stop. So we will. Yep. Uncouple vehicles. Back up the front. Put the independent the rest of the way on. Kill our generator again so that our helper over there, who never actually helps, very, very lazy person, never gets out and does her thing. We are uncoupling all the hoppers. Very good. And just for later, let's clean that side too. Alright, we're going to stop at the tipple, but I am going to go and do something first. I think I opened this before, so it should be fine. It is open. Very good. Let's get up this side for a change. Hello, did your job for you. Just thought I'd let you know. You, you can just keep sitting there if you want. That's okay. I don't mind. would help if I turned the gen field on before I try and rev up, really. And away we go. And did we leave them behind? Yes. And I'll just check the track, because I think we're supposed to go somewhere different. We are. We're going up under the tipple. The game gets confused, Chicago, if usually if you hook your train up to another one. 
I was actually trying a little experiment because I was um, thinking as part of a project to try and set up the 2015 cleanup trains that emptied this entire route of all of its rolling stock. But it was a little problematic in getting it to work. The only way I'll be able to get it to do it is to actually build the scenarios myself, I think. And then I won't have any rolling stock anywhere. We're going to fill up our diesel engines with coal under the loader. I believe all this stuff's abandoned these days. Yeah, we'll be going back to our other set now. Let's have a look at the map. Yep. This is always a little bit of a pain to get right. Yeah, CSX took it over in, I think, sometime late 90s, from memory. Not 100% certain on that, so I could be well and truly wrong. But they closed this line in 2015. And in 2017, decided to reverse that decision and they reopened the main line. But they didn't reopen any of the branches, I don't think. There goes the other train leaving with all the other hoppers. Uh, you check your facts on that one, Chicago. CSX very much closed this line in 2015 and they reopened it in 2017. They only reopened the main line. Hello, Ferromero. How are you? Glunk. Go on, go into first service. That's what we want. All right, we have to jump out again. We'll go out this side this time. Why not? Go and take off about half our hoppers. And it's at this point I've had the back ones roll away. And I think it happens because you can sit there on the independent brake. It's these ones. Let's do the naughty thing. I don't want to climb over the coupler. I just want to pull the lever. Oh, fine. Climb over the coupler then. See if I care. No one in their right mind would ever actually do that. But that's okay. We're going to do it again. No, we can't. But I've unlocked both couplers because it just makes it easier to couple up later. And when you have that set roll away, I think it happens because you don't put the train brake on and you sit here on the independent brake, but I have put the train brake on this time, so hopefully I won't roll away. Hello, Johnny Maguire, whom Amprak does not... 
there has been a passenger train on this route, but I don't think it's Amtrak. I don't think they run here, but I would happily be corrected on that. Lots of notches. Let's go. Now, let's just check the track when I go, let's go like that. Because we want to go over there, which is fine. And that's going to be a go via, I think. Yes, so we want to make sure it's clear at the other end, too. Which it is... I'm not sure where it goes after the go via, so we shall just stay tuned. And Michael, the meats died. Huh. You wake it up again. And let me just oops. Keep that going. Let me just mute Michael so he doesn't hear everything twice. Okay, meat's open, Michael. Hello. Hello. Uh, so the the passenger service that ran on here. We actually want to load coal, so I have to slow down. Eight. Let's set the tracks. Where does it want to go now that we've had a go via? It wants to go up there. Okay. So we're... We're all set for where it wants to go now. And we're losing the speed at a great rate of knots. Let's have some notch three, but let's also have a bit of independent break. That ought to do it. Yep, that'll do it. That'll hold us steady, I think. All right, now that I'm set up loading, uh, Ferromero just got done do doing some Touch a Happy Pass, which was lovely. So he probably butchered the name, but can't remember how to spell it. Oh, it's pretty close. I think you're missing a C, but not much else. But I wouldn't worry about it anyway, we know what you mean. Just bring the brake off a little, try and maintain our speed. As we fill up. How is sunny Canada today, Michael? It's probably dark. <laughs> And how about you, Ferramera? How's the weather? And Johnny Maguire as well. I don't think I asked you that. How is it in your location? The back set didn't roll away, so I think maybe I'm right about putting, having to put the train brake on. How are you going speed-wise? You might even have to notch up. No, it's picking up. Sitting on 1.1 miles an hour. That'll do. It's a bit slow, but it'll do the job. Uh, it is definitely TSW today, yes. This route is in TS, though. I think I own it, but I can't remember the last time I played it. I think it was rather a long time ago. Overcast and rainy for Michael, and I've just cranked you up to make you a little louder. That's uh, pretty much what it is here, too. Overcast and rainy, and right now it is... Oh, I can't find my device. It's buried under papers. 12 degrees Celsius. Lovely. I think we might need another notch. Just have to really watch the speed now. And Ferromero says it's quite wet here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and been raining all weekend. I haven't been to... 
Ah, warmer. So we finished loading. Now where does it want me to stop? Where's my stop marker? Down there. Okay. Brakes. First service. Come on. No. Throttle idle. Not full bore. Alright. Let that settle. Come back. I think we're rolling. I think we're rolling a lot. But that's okay. As long as the tracks are set. I don't really care if we're rolling. It'll be okay. Because I really doubt my independent will actually hold the brake when they're loaded. And John Maguire, who's in Dublin, Ireland, in bed watching on the phone with a nice mild night. Look, this is really starting to roll. Come on. That's better. Just let that come to a stand and I'll come down here and watch. And do you remember me? He says, April showers brings May flowers, except for Pennsylvania folks. <laughs> uh, this is a scenario, Ferromero. It's um, limited power. And I've never managed to complete it. I've always managed to get it wrong. So I'm having a go. Let's see what happens this time. Those are starting to release. I'm going to try and use some independent to control it at least a little bit. And we'll see what happens. Now, I was last in Philadelphia in 2001. I was going on a trip to New York with one of my workmates and her family were in Philly so we went to New York via Philly so she could have a visit and so I could try a proper cheesesteak. I need to stop this about level with the caboose. It's certainly picking up some more speed. We're up to 10 mile an hour now, so let's give it a little bit of train brake. Start bringing this under control. Now let's give it a lot of train brake. That should be enough. Is it going to stop? Is it going to stop? Yes, but the question is, did I leave? Ooh, that's got to be a little bit close. Hmm. You reckon the caboose is going to go past that? I reckon it might. We'll see. I kind of actually think I might pull it ahead one car and then uncouple. I think I came back a little bit too far. No, that should be good. Hmm. I'm a little concerned. I think I'll pull it ahead, just one car. Can it lift it? Yes, it can. Hmm. 
now I'm much happier. Let's put it there. Let's get a nice, good, strong brake application happening on there. All right, back in the cab. Full independent, neutral. Did you just move? You stay on lap. And off we go to do your job again. Yes, you. Yes, I'm looking at you. Never do your job. You just sit there. Watch out the window. That's okay. I don't want to climb over. Fine. I'll just uncouple it. Where is the lever? There it is. But what I am going to do, having uncoupled that, is I'm going to go around here. And I'm going to go down here. I'm going to uncouple that side as well. And I'm going to come down the back and make sure that they're uncoupled. Uh, Johnny Maguire suggests saving frequently. And do you remember me says, too bad you can't do the arm's length test as you would in real life. Stand on the rail closest to the rail car and see if it touches it. Now, this is someone open. This one is open. Sooner or later, we're going to need to couple to this. And that one's open too, so that's fine. I thought I'd come down and have a quick look. On the railway I operate on, we have um, white painted sleepers, which tell you what the fouling points are. And as long as you haven't gone over the white painted sleeper, you will be all good. Now, where does it want me to go? It wants me to go back up there. So you have to switch the track so often in this scenario. That looks happy. Okay. Gen switch. Forwards. Grunt. And we are powering. That's a little needle I'm watching to see when I'm powering. And then breaks off and off we go. Very good. And then I assume we're going to go and get those other hoppers from down there. I shouldn't spin around like that. It'll make people seasick. I do work for that railroad, yes. I'm a volunteer. I have worked on other railroads in the past. Well, railways, actually. I have worked... No. I have worked for a railroad. Mostly railways. done some work with BART in the Bay Area, San Francisco, done work with San Francisco Muni, I have done, I think I did a half a day at SEPTA looking at some software for them, and I've done a very brief stint with the um, MTA of New York as well, again helping them evaluate some software. I always found it ironic that in the industry I was in, it was very, very common to hire the competitor of whoever won a bid for something to review what they what the competitor was doing. I always thought that was vaguely funny. My work on the preserved railway is I actually work on the trains. My most common job is track inspection, but I um, do work on the footplate on diesels. I 
And in theory, I'm getting back onto the steam foot plate at some point, but uh, for various reasons, that just hasn't happened yet. Yeah, I look forward to finishing it, Johnny Maguire. I hope it'll be um, cool. It is a bit of work, so hopefully it'll be fun. And do you remember me, he says he used to work for Penn Central and Conrail, Pennsylvania as a yard brakeman and humpmaster out of Enola Hard in Her Yard, sorry, in Harrisburg. That's awesome. I'm hunting for someone who worked on the clinch field. It doesn't have to be an engineer. But I want to be able to interview someone about the railway. I take it that means you've also finished it, Michael. I was watching the AI yesterday, just because I could, and I noticed it always does this. It always stops just yep. before it couples up. And then, Stubborn, it, but I to get it done. and then it couples up. Yeah, I seem to recall trying to stream it once. And I seem to recall failing dismally. Uncouple the caboose. Okay. Off we go. Let's drop off the little red peanut. Uh, do you remember me? Question I asked a lot is what's in the nose of an F7? Uh, if it's anything like ours, a toilet. We don't have F7s as such. It's interesting you'll let me unlock those ones. And you know what I probably should have done before I did that? I know the game puts it on anyway, but you know. Oh yeah, apply it. I want to apply it. It just makes me feel better to do this. I just have to remember to take it off later. Yeah, we have things called the S-Class, which are basically an F7, but they're, they're single-ended like these ones, and they have a toilet in the nose. I can't say I've ever tried to open the nose door. No, you can't on these ones. Away we go. Did we actually leave our caboose behind? Yes, we did. And it's not even rolling away. Is that thing got brake wheels on both ends? Huh. I wonder why it's got brake wheels on both ends. Weird. Alright, uh, where does it want me to go this time? A different track, of course. Couldn't use the same track. No. That would be silly. You're going into an empty road, so that's all good. How are we doing for speed? Five. It's a little high, but that's okay. We'll keep going to speed for the moment. And in the F7s you've been experienced with, do you remember me? The toilet is located in the rear on the engine hood. Very cool. It's always interesting how the um, different railways and railroads, buying what is essentially the same locomotive, mostly had their own little variations to the design. Rail driver jumped down to two, which I'm not that happy with, so let's go for three, but I'll do it with the keyboard. 
still picking up a little bit of speed. Let's use a little bit of indie brake to slow us down as well, because three's too much and two's not enough. And let's just go over here and watch it load. Not that. There you go. That'd be a good spot to sit. Do you remember me? He said, do you know the Union Pacific turbine units were the only locomotives to have 22 notches of power? The only American locomotives, maybe. But there's um, German ones that have a great number of notches on their foreign Bremsen wheel. I suppose they're not so much notches per se. They're more taps on the transformers. Pretty full, and we dumped a heap on the couplers. Fantastic. Dirty couplers. What everybody needs. It's nothing quite like spending a morning shunting when I've forgotten to bring my gloves. And I come out at the end of the day with different coloured hands. Trying to keep an eye on the speed with the rail driver while we watch the slowed. The turbine loco was quite an interesting concept. Very loud, I'm told. If I remember rightly, it was essentially a jet engine driving a generator, or an alternator probably, rather than a generator. Hello NJTE, how are you? We are playing limited power scenario on Clinchfield and so far I haven't stuffed it up. I do note so far. Because I will be somewhat surprised if I don't. How are we going up the front there? Oh, it's alright. One more to go. And we're slowing down a lot. More notches. Imagine trying to do this in the snow. Slippy slidey. NJTE says the power of the sun in the palm of my hand. We are loaded. Okay. And a First service break should do. And just wait, make sure that's stable. Is it going to hold on a first service? Uh, no, it's not. Let's give it some more. That should hold it. Yep, 30 pounds is good. Stop at location, blue diamond siding. Alright, let's have a look at the map. Oh, you want me to go up there? Okay. It's a good thing I stopped you when I did then. Because you want me to go that way. I assume it wants me to go that way because it wants to go back down that way to hook onto those cars, but... That's a bit strange, but that's okay. We'll do it. Track set okay. Let's give it quite a lot of notches. Four should be enough, I hope. And NJTE says I was probably wondering where I was. Well, I know you were here before. I just thought you were still here. So no, I guess I wasn't. <laughs> I didn't know you'd gone. Uh, do you remember me? Says the big burners turb bird burners turbines were na nicknamed as anything flying over them became KFC or Big Blues. Yeah, that'd be a little bit uncomfortable as a bird, wouldn't it? Sucked into a jet turbine. They must have sucked in air from the top. 
I suppose they'd have to so that they don't pull in um, ballast and things. Which would not be very good for them at all. Hmm, there's a pole. Now I'm going to do something naughty here. I'm going to break before I notch off. enough to hold us. Couple to the formation back there. All right, let's have a look at the map. It's curious why it made me move forward when we're kind of right anyway, so we want to go onto that track. Who else finds they turn their heads sideways whenever they're looking at the map? I'm trying to work it out. All right, we should be pretty much right to go backwards. I'm not going to throttle it at all. And as soon as we start moving, I'm going to go into first service. Just to give me a little bit of holding power. Get down low. Let's see how much the independent can do. We're starting to slow down again. Don't know if I'm slowing down quick enough though. Because I don't want too big a bang. I only want a little bang. Down to seven mile an hour now. I need to get down below four. I'm getting there. Down to six now. We probably will come down in speed enough that I don't have to do too much different. We've still got a fair way to go, so I we'll have to come off the independent a bit. Because it's holding a little too hard. Welcome back, Ferromero. Was all that talk of KFC making you hungry? I only had my breakfast about an hour and a half ago. Ooh, that picked up quick. <laughs> Alright. As soon as these come close to touching, go straight into full service on the brake. And that is actually the main reason I wanted to pull forward. Because, can I get down to the back of this consist? Not with that key, but I should be able to with the 8. My train's still moving around. So we've actually ended up, after that little unintentional shove, almost at the curve point of the track. So if I'd left it where it was, 
we'd probably be about there now. Sometimes I think about stuff. Not often, but sometimes. Alright. And you're already on full. Up we go, let's get rid of some hopper cars. And hope they have enough brakes on that they don't roll away. Oh, I don't want to climb over the coupler. But I will go around here and I will unlock that. Okay. The reason I'm quite fastidious about unlocking both couplers is it's just... Something I've learnt working on a real railway is if you always unlock both, you never get any surprises in getting um, knuckleheads jammed together. Alright. Gen. Forwards. Grunt. Power's coming up. And release. Now, where does he want me to go? Different track, of course. Naturally. Are rail cars following you that shouldn't be? Yeah, that can happen as well, because they do jam up. That certainly can happen. Uh, Johnny Maguire said, When I first got this route, I thought I would struggle with the F7, but they are really easy and fun to drive. They are fairly straightforward. Once you get over the weird switches that aren't in too many other locos. That should about do us. And do you remember me said, what's one locomotive you want to see in TW's TSW2 more than anything else? That's a really interesting question. Couple to the caboose. Okay, let's set up for that while I think about what loco I would like to see. I think that'll do. Back down to our little caboose. Into reverse. Not going to bother powering. And we'll get a little bit of independent on almost straight away. Just to control our speed. It's an interesting question. I would... I would like to see a Amtrak mainline diesel for an American route because I would like to be able to use them on lots of the other routes. Because at the moment you can't do... Well, you kind of can. I mean, you saw my um, thing using the electric Amfac locomotive. So I wouldn't mind one of those. I don't really mind which one. I personally like the newest generation more than I like the older ones. I think the older ones to me aren't particularly shapely they're sort of a bit boxy they're like the 1970s Volvo of trains I guess for UK routes I would very much like one of the large steamers Either Mallard or Tornado. So Tornado is a modern locomotive. Built very recently. And Mallard set the uh, world speed record for steam trains. I kind of think it still holds it too. I think it still holds the record as the fastest steam train. Not 100% on that one, but I kind of think so. Well, you never know, Johnny. You might get something. Um, now, locos for the German routes, I would love to see a very, very big steam. I think that would be cool. 
but I can't say I know a lot about German steam engines except that they're really impressive. That, that coupler is closed. Look at that. All my talk about couplers. And did I unlock that one? No. <laughs> Don't forget to release the brake on the caboose. Yes. Very good point there, Michael. So now I've got to come out again. I've got the independent on full. I'm not going to bother with the train brake because... Oops. It is only the one car. So the independence of these two locos should hold that one car quite well. I actually kind of think in the game it doesn't matter at all if you don't release the handbrakes because I don't think TSW2 does anything with handbrakes. Unlike Run 8 where if you don't turn off, take the handbrakes off, you'll end up with a fiery mess. Alright, now naturally it'll probably want a different track, because, you know, probably does. But it does, look at that. It's like the people that made this scenario sit, sat down and went, how can we mess with their heads? And just in case I go too far, I'm going to set that one as well. Wait for some power. There we go. And yes, pretty much everything from the 70s was kind of boxy. Boxy or rubbish, those were your options, I guess. And do you remember me? He says the one locomotive wants to see more than anything is the Union Pacific DDX 40A. Yeah. Now, if we had Australian railroads in this game, what I'd like to see is what's called an R-Class, which is pretty close to an American Hudson. They were a strange locomotive. They were made in England, but they were made to the American Hudson design. Yeah, Big Boy would be nice. I think before we see things like Big Boy, what I'd like to see is... Um, steam come into the game and settle down because I, my expectations are that it'll be pretty good when it comes out but once it gets into a wide audience people will find ways to break it because people are people and people do the things that people do so give the new technology a chance to settle a little bit And then start thinking about things like articulated locomotives like the big boy because articulated's like Garrett's, Fairley's and the big boy style, um, the SP cab forwards. I went past my break point. That's okay. We'll just roll back. It'll be fine, honest. I went past it again. <sighs> I'm doing well. Did someone make a comment about me doing accurate braking recently? Because I think I'm messing this one up. Seven, six, five. Come on, a bit more, a bit more, a little bit more. Is that going to be enough? No. Who sets a breaking point? Oh, I've gone past it. What the? All right.
Yeah, big boy would be nice, Johnny Maguire. But I think we just need to let it settle a bit first. Come on, start rolling. Nice and slow. Ah, uh, you know what? I betcha, 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 I'm on the wrong track. Uh huh. <laughs> Life. See? I knew I'd mess it up sooner or later. So, do you remember me? says, do you know what was the world's most powerful steam locomotive for pulling? <laughs> I would imagine that the most powerful one would have been something with very little wheels. And it would have been a freight locomotive, not a passenger locomotive. So I'll get on to the other messages once we get the answer to what is the most powerful one, because I'm curious. So I set that one right, but I didn't set this one right. Because I'm a donkey. And that didn't move, did it? Or did it move? No, it didn't. It's one of those switches. Right, now we've moved. Now we'll sit here and let it run over us. I hope I'm not in reverse. No. Nah. Should we get out of the way? What do you reckon? Probably. Am I standing in a hole? So, do you remember me, says the most powerful steam locomotive for pulling was the Pennsylvania Q2 duplex 4464 steam locomotive, 20 years in service. That's big. That's very, very big. 4464, that's a lot. Gonna have to look that up. In fact, you know what? I need to look that up right now. I want to know what that looks like. Let's have a look, see if I can find a picture. I'm easily distracted, aren't I? There it is. Uh, where's a full-size picture of it? I don't want a piddly little picture, I want a big one. There we go. That looks meaty. It does look meaty. So it looks like it's, um, it's a Hudson-ish design. It's got box pock wheels, solids on the pilot bogey, it's got air compressors buried under the front there, that's impressive, there's some kind of radiator up there by the looks of it, I wonder what that was for. And so that looks like it's articulated, because that's the only reason you'd bother having two sets of cylinders. And I can see a massive steam pipe going through there, yeah that's pretty impressive. Uh, seriously powerful beast, that one, I'm guessing. Oh well, back to the task at hand. Let me 
should be going to just the right spot. So we'll come down here and wait for it. It's already picking up a ridiculous amount of speed. Anybody want to see me crash a caboose into a train? Well, I don't really. I reckon you upset your brakeman a bit if you, um, if you hurt his house. And he's not going to make you a cup of tea. open that one looks open the only reason I turn all that stuff off is because I reckon you're going to steal the train because you don't do anything else. Obviously a hijacker. Alright, now we need to go down the other end. Yay! That's our loading completed. I just realised I can't see the chat. I've got a web page sitting on top of it. Let me go back to the chat. Look at all these things. 17,838 horsepower. The Novo Cherkask 4E5K locomotive is the most powerful in the world. That's impressive. And NJTE says service runs in two sections between Wakefield 241 Street and Chambers Street via the 1 to Southbury 2. Oh, you're talking about one of your locals. Okay. And do you remember, C says it gets very complicated when figuring out power, the weight, traction, horsepower in a steam locomotive. It does indeed. It is actually a difficult thing to do. It involves heat engineering calculations. Because it's not just attractive effort and the dynamo pulling effort. I'll tell if I turned it back on before I try and go anywhere. Give it some notches. Two will be enough because it's just the locos. And they are coming up. And off we go. And my road appears to be set for me, which is good. I can do a sneaky little thing. No, actually, I won't do a sneaky little thing on the map because it's going well and it goes badly when I start doing sneaky little things on the map that go, I'll just get ahead of myself. Did I just say the scenario that always defeats me is going well? No, no, it's going horribly. Time for a cold bath, little F7. Hope you're ready. All right, let's come back here. We probably run a run down beside it, which we do. And that will be a go via, no doubt. And then we want to set that one. And that one is still set, so we can be safe there. I could probably change ends at this point too, but uh, 
I haven't. I'll change ends when the scenario tells me to. So NJTE is telling us about the 2 train, which is uh, being split. I assume they're doing some work in the middle part, NJTE, which is why that's happening. And do you remember me says that the Novo Cherkask 4E5K locomotive is electric? He said steam. And NJT is talking about some other trains local to him. And yeah, they're actually replacing the entire signalling system in the, in the uh, subway. So I'm not that surprised they've got some disruption. They're taking out the system that's been there pretty much since it opened, although it's been modernised a few times. And replacing it with modern Alstom equipment, I believe. And there's inspections in the tunnel as well. Very good. It'd be difficult to inspect those tunnels. They are not only dark, they are filthy. Because they're open to the street level and all the crap falls into them. Yeah, they're gradually modernising all the lines NJT, who just said that the 7 line already has CBTC, ATO and ATPM. Are they actually running the automated trains on the 7 line or are they still using operators? Set that for that track and that one's already okay. Dish them inside since we'll be able to see them. Uh, that's the Gothard Tunnel, I think. NJTE. He said the sorry. Do you remember me? He said one train he'd never get on only because of its forty mile long, forty mile long tunnel that runs into Switzerland. I think that's the Gothard or Gotthard, however you're supposed to say it. It's probably Gotthard because it's German pronunciation. It's always a little more harsh. Would you ride through the channel tunnel? That's fairly long. <laughs> uh, do you remember me says the thought of being in a tunnel under millions of tons for hours? No thanks, I'll pass on it. Have you ridden um, any of the New York trains like the Path or the Amtrak trains that go underneath the river? good Oi. forwards not backwards I 
And NJTE says they have answered my question before is that they have automated trains with operators as backups. Yes, it's a bit like BART, there's always an operator there of some kind. And ATO doesn't perform very well in bad weather. That's why ATO is only used in the rush hour. Other times, only CBTC and ATPM. And it's very hard to read the chat and manipulate your locomotive just so. Full service. Let's just let that sit. Independent brake to full application. Don't really know why it wants to do that, but that's okay. Seems like a strange thing to do. And sit in the other engineer's seat, leaving this brake cut in. Really? I don't think so. I think we'd want to turn a bunch of stuff off, don't we? We can leave the other lights and things. Uh, no, we shouldn't have our class lights on. Shouldn't really have the number lights on either in a trailing locomotive. That should be able to be left set the way it is, because it doesn't matter, but I want to cut this out. So I actually want to move this to handle off. Has it got a handle off position, or does it go straight to emergency? Uh, it doesn't have another notch, does it? So I'll just leave it in full service. And cut it out. Alright. That should... Uh, you probably want to go to off. No, not brakes. Off. So it doesn't tell you a lot of directions, unless it's going to get me to come back here, which is possible. And I'm just second-guessing it. Get the door. Up we go. Now a happy assistant's not going to come with us. Let's get some windows open. Just because you do. Headlights. Press and hold the engine start button. No way. <laughs> All right. This is an incorrect procedure, little scenario people. Because this loco was running. Uh, do you remember me? Says he's not a fan of tunnels. Yes, subway from Hoboken, New Jersey, into New York City. Yeah, I rode the path a lot. On uh, not my last trip, the one before it. I think I might have to report this scenario as being just a little bit stuffed, to be honest with you. Alright, the rest of it is fine. Into forwards. And the brake was already cut in, that's interesting. Series parallel. Two locomotives. Release the independent. Noting that the independent in the back is still on and does not cut out with this brake stand because they are separate. So I'd be kind of curious if this is actually going to work. But let's just check our track ahead first, which looks fine. Shouldn't need to apply much power. <laughs> I think it'll just roll by itself as the brakes bump up. But I actually kind of think it won't go anywhere because the independent brakes on on the other one. But let's try it. See, it's still showing bro brake pressure. Yeah, I think we're going to do a full service application. And this will eventually stop. Right. Independent full on. Neutral. And 
I'm going to go back to that other locomotive and I'm going to do what I should have done in the first place but the scenario didn't want me to. And I can hear another train coming. Why can I hear another train moving? No, it's that one. That's fine. Yeah, so I think the setup's instructions are just a uh, little bit wrong. But all we really have to do is just come in here and go off. And this brake stand is... It's not going to tell me whether it's cut out, but I know I did, so it's fine. Now what I've got to hope is that it doesn't roll away while I'm messing around with doors. Alright, so now if I release my brake, and if I bail off my loco, that's well, interesting, it just goes straight back up. Alright, let's release the train brake. Now it goes down. Okay, so the brakes aren't quite prototypical. We're going downhill, so I shouldn't have to work too hard to make this move, but we shall see. Because it feels remarkably like the brakes are on to me. Oh, maybe not. Alright, let's get our transition ready for braking. start with some braking power. And let's just let that settle. That should start doing something, I hope. Doesn't look like it's doing much so far. We're up to 25 mile an hour now, so let me give it a little bit of a break as well. I am... Yeah, generating. So in theory, those are on. I wouldn't have thought I'd have to put in this much. No. Well, I'm definitely going to bring this back into control with a service brake. That should be enough. Right, we're still increasing speed at the moment. Uh, it's settled now, 37 mile an hour. I'm not watching the chat at the moment, funnily enough. So I've got notch 8 on dynamic brakes, and I've got 30 pounds on the train brake. And I'm not really having a lot of effect, so... Hold on for the wild ride, folks. And do you remember me says railroading locomotive controlling is used by a term seat of your pants, which means filling the locomotive as you control it with power. And NJT, yeah, apparently I was holding a lot of dead weight, but uh I'm going to give it a bit more break. It's almost a full application now. That's forty pounds in the brake cylinders. That should start slowing us down, and it has. Good. Now that I'm not shunting anymore, I'll get rid of that. Alright, our speed is starting to come back under control. No, it's not quite a runaway NJT. I'm getting it back. I'm going to let it get right back down to about... Oh, you had a bit of wheel slip there. And some automatic sand application by the sounds of it. I'm going to get back to 10 mile an hour. I'm going to bail off the loco if it'll let me. Which it did. And now I'm going to release the train brake completely. Now I'll give that a little while to charge up again. 
and then I'm going to do a normal service. Let's give it a first service. Okay, we're still creeping up in speed, but it's a bit of a slow creep now. But it doesn't look like my first service actually put any brakes on, which is interesting. But we're only very slowly creeping up, so I'm happy at the moment. JTE is telling us some more stuff about some more New York trains. And that's the end of that cup of tea. Well, I'm pretty happy. We're staying under 15 mile an hour presently. Do you remember me? Says there's a timetable service on the Horseshoe Curve route, that, so you can't slow down the train at all. And it's had five different streamers try it, and they all failed. Do you know which service it is? I know there's one that's really hard. Like, it really does not want to stop, but it does. It's the one coming down from the mine at South Fork, I believe. That's the only one I know that's really hard, unless there's one that's just too underpowered with too many vehicles, which is possible. We're doing okay. We're sitting around the 15 mile an hour mark. We've come up to 16, so we're, we're creeping up a little. When we get to 20, I'll do a, a service break. Just since we've done all this shunting, because I don't want to do all that again if I stuff it up down here somewhere. You do like telling people about service changes, NJT. I've noticed that. That's okay. I assume you're looking at the MTA's website or something like that. Or are you reading their tweets? Because they blast it all out on Twitter as well. This must have been an interesting rock fall at some stage. Have been a good mess to clean up. Do you remember me? If you can figure out which service that is, I'll have a look. Not saying I'll do any better at it, but I'm curious which one it is. Wouldn't mind giving it a try. That's always bugged me. Why are the diesels blasting out exhaust when they're in dynamics? Didn't quite fill that car up. Surprised it let us out of there. It's 
service is a 80 coal Top Gun freight train from Johnstown to Altoona. And problem is when you come out of Tunnel Track 1 on the slide. Okay. Not actually sure if I've got Horseshoe installed in the moment. Yeah, it'd be great if you could find the name Do You Remember Me, I'd appreciate that. Now yeah, we're looking on the gradient down here. 2% down. Right, we're holding our own. We're doing okay. Getting up the other side might be interesting. <laughs> Look out cars, I'm not stopping even if I could. And a red in two and a half miles. Oh, that's going to be fun. Hopefully it's on the upslope. Actually, no, I hope it's not on the upslope, because then I'll have to stop and start again on an upslope. sit down here at the end of the yard. This point set for us? They are. Good. We can sit in that, just that special spot that camera people like to take. So it looks like they're on the track, but they're not quite. You can't quite zoom in enough on this one, though. It says headlight bright, but it's not actually on. Looks like my cab light's on too. I don't know. That's better. It didn't believe the rail driver. Cruising along. All right, or why you didn't join America till 1950. Ow. So that creek's higher than the track. I wonder if it ever spills over onto the track. That would be interesting. It'd be a waterfall. I think our slope must be dropping off. Yes. So we're slowing down a lot. Let's just have a look at the gradient profile. So we're going to start going up soon. Let's 
see how that goes. Yeah, that's picking up speed again. I can probably knock my first service off too. And now bring some dynamics back in before we get too quick. Yeah, that seems to be holding. I know it's a bit slow, but I'm hesitant about letting it pick up speed. Although it's dropping now, so I'll have to. Do you remember me? He says he's not sure if the update yesterday fixed anything on the route, as I haven't tried anything since the update. I rarely know about the public updates because I've usually tried them out a month before you get them. NJT asks, how did Australia feel about 9-11? I was actually in America during 9-11. In fact, um, I was in the World Trade Center exactly a year to the day before it happened. And living in San Francisco when it did happen. So I very much got to live through it. And how did Australia in general feel? Well, I'm pretty sure Australian troops came and helped out, so politically felt strongly. I don't know how the people really feel, because I wasn't living here then. Looks like we're managing to maintain control of our speed. Slowing down again now. So I'll come off another notch. I have to know, did my uh, conductor actually stay in the other loco? Yep, there she is. Hello, how you doing? Still having fun back there? Must be lonely. Enjoying the view of that hopper? It's a decent rail fan spot. Hopefully won't get run over. Would Australian and New Zealand unify? No. Not a chance in hell. <laughs> we are very different countries. In quite a lot of ways, New Zealand is more advanced than Australia. Yes, the conductors are pretty useless in TSW. I have to give you that, do you remember me? They never really do anything. I do often refer to New Zealand as our eastern states. And New Zealand does often refer to us as their western states, but um, we have a lot of agreements in place. We can travel back and forth freely between Australia and New Zealand. We don't need visas or passports. 
you still have to take your passport because you go through the international part of the airport, but no one really cares because they go, oh, you're an Aussie, in you go. And the same when they come here. And we can live in both countries without having to be a citizen. Very rarely you can see them. Yeah, it's true, Michael. Not all the trains actually end up with a conductor for whatever reason, and sometimes they appear and then disappear. Ferramero says he was living in New York City all his life until about seven years ago. And his family was living in New York City when 9-11 happened, but it was like two years old, so he doesn't personally remember the event. It's probably good that you don't, to be honest. It was bad enough on the other side of the country. And do you remember me? He says he was, he was at a club across the street the night before 9-11. Yeah, that's pretty terrifying. It was a very strange time for America. You couldn't turn on the TV. You just simply couldn't turn it on. There was nothing but that on television, on all the channels. And it was probably, even kids' channels, it was probably about a month before most of the channels stopped talking about it 24 hours a day and reverted mostly to their normal programming, except for CNN that just couldn't shut up about it. They just kept going on and on and on about it for months, showing the video over and over and over again. It's like, I think, think you probably caused enough PTSD there to CNN, but no, they didn't think so. I'm pretty sure we're coming off the slope now so I could speed up, but I do have a red signal in a little while. But I think we are actually on a slight upslope now. So let's kill the dynamics and just roll, I think, for the moment. Let that sit for a few seconds. Yeah, a friend of mine who lives in Brooklyn, she didn't even leave her house for about a week after it. She just couldn't get herself to go outside. Time for some power. And then JTE says it took the subway a year after 9-11 to return to normal service. I'd argue it never has. In my recent visits there, there's a lot, lot more security, there's a lot more police. So I don't think it ever has completely gone back to normal. And try take a camera out of your bag in the subway somewhere, anything other than a phone, you'll have someone standing next to you very quickly. Wondering what you're doing, asking you. I suspect it's probably in the next 10 years we'll start to feel a, a new wave of sickness come from that event in New York City because there was an awful lot of asbestos in the air for a few weeks and that takes about 30 years before it starts having a noticeable effect on people. Do I remember rightly that this signal's just around a corner and that you can't see it till you're right on top of it? That's an interesting suggestion, do you remember me? You sort of change personalities when you get up. It's not a bad idea. It would also be kind of cool 
I can't remember. It would also be kind of cool um, if you go out on the free camera if it was not first person, if it was third person. Because then you could see yourself. So the funny thing about this particular railroad is I wouldn't even know this signal was red until I was right on top of it. And we must be going downhill again. Alright, that's... Yeah, that's starting to control my speed, I think. Yeah, it's coming down again. Brakes are starting to bite in, so I'll just let them sit, I think. Because I have a faint suspicion, even if it is, as it is, I'm probably going to have to release them before we get there. To trigger whatever it is we're waiting to trigger. And there's our red signal right there. Or is this one of those ones you have to call out, maybe? Uh, no, not window. Obviously, you uh, don't use that to con contact the signaler. Proceed at restricted speed. Here we go. Yeah, there were a lot of service changes around that time. The path was dead as well my 2018 trip to New York I actually stayed in New Jersey because it was heaps cheaper at that time now not so much and Farrah Murray says his parents have shared crazy stories with me and videos of the towers with smoke pouring from out from our apartment across the Hudson River and Farrah Murray says I always prepare for a red especially if I had an approach signal before it had that happened on T T Happy Pass earlier yeah, I think this one's a root knowledge one, because these red cards just mean get permission from the dispatcher to come out. Yeah, radio control could be fun on something like um, the, the German 363 would make a lot of sense for that. The um, little G6 shunter would make sense for that too. So we're coming back out onto the main now. We still have a yellow ahead, so I'm not powering up particularly hard. You often don't get answers on suggestions. So don't be disheartened if you didn't get one. I know they do read them all. And more recently, they've got Sam looking at um, ways to have a more open game for people that don't know anything about trains. That doesn't mean they're going to dumb it down for people that do know about trains. It means they're going to um, dumb it down for people that don't know about trains. Yeah, Paths had its uh, fair share of beatings with, um, I think, Hurricane Sandy, wasn't it? Was it Sandy that took it out? What's left on this? Just get to Alan's storage. I've only got 1.1 miles left to completely stuff this up.
I could go back to dynamics, but with such a short distance, there's probably not that much point. Nah, you're not going to do that. <laughs> and do you remember me? He says he's noticed over the years what they answer to and what they don't. Yeah, I suppose it depends how close you actually get to what they're doing. Because they're not going to want to reveal ahead of time what their thoughts and plans are. They could potentially do something like what's in trains, which is called DCC mode in trains, which basically gives you a, a little controller wheel. If you turn it to the right, you go faster. If you turn it to the left, you stop. And go backwards if you turn it more to the left. So there's plenty of different options for what they could do. So we'll just have to wait and see. I'm not so concerned about that. Do you remember me? I know there's a lot of passion in the team about Steam, so... I think they have a very good chance of getting it right. And it's not as though they're really short of experience on Steam either. They know what they can do in TS. Point six of a mile to go. I'm looking forward to steam now. Mm, is that the right track? Yes, it is. Oh, I'm very much looking forward to steam. And do you remember me? Does like Trains 19, loves the game, and have been custom building a route in my hometown for the last year and five months. Have you upgraded to Trains 22? And if you're building the route, hang on. Oop. If you're building the route, make sure you talk to N3V because they're really helpful. Their community people are really, really good. Getting a few messages there, Michael. Michael, fix this. Fix this. This is broken, Michael. Just remember, mate, it's all money. Pays the rent, keeps the lights on, keeps food in the fridge. Yeah, it's getting rather annoying. <laughs> oh, I can... No, I, one of our guys saying he's... A, go on. No. No, it's quite the opposite. One of our guys is going away with another to Iceland for a stag party. Go oh, on, you have to go. That'd be fun. I've always found trains to be a little more cartoon-like than the, than the others. It's somewhere between this one and um, TS. Multiplayer is fun, though. I do like getting out in an American mainline route where everybody's expecting to do 60 mile an hour. And I'll putter along in my little yard shunter at 5.
400 and 400 odd yards to go. Oh, what are we going to do after that? Could kill it. Oh, I've got half an hour left. Ooh, there's a gap in the world up there. Up in the top right hand corner. Trains 19 is good enough for you to have to upload and figure out a new trains. It's actually the same. It's not much different between 19 and 22, to be honest. I don't think there's any visible differences. It's uh, a bit like TS Classic. You don't get, don't really get core differences. You just get a bunch of new routes each package. I quite like the Bensdale route. It's um, not too far from me. I recognise the territory that's in it. It's been modelled really nicely. enough I think that might be enough to make it stop maybe oh look at that it doesn't get better than that well it does I could have got it down to zero but that's cool that you're well known in the community do you remember me let's see how you did Hey, look at that. I was only speeding really badly once. <laughs> that was that near runaway. And a god. Excellent. A gold medal. I thought it was quiet, Chicago. You've been gone. You, you just came back just in time to see me finish it. All right, then. Nah, that's too much information, dude. Don't need to know you had to share. I haven't actually got a lot installed. So what are we going to do? Because when I switch, I turn off all my DLCs because it takes too long otherwise. What are we going to do? Another clinch field? Or I can just kill it here, one or the other. Do a quick Boston. Or I can pop out if you know that service. Do you remember me? I can pop out and load up um, Horseshoe and we can have a look. I can install Horseshoe. Let's do that. Uh, what are you going to see in Steam if I do that? Probably nothing. Should be fine. Oi, select it. All right, load it up. Come on. Download away. 5.2 gig. That shouldn't take too long, I hope. Tiki, 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 tiki. Thank you, Ferromero. I was actually pretty happy that I finished that. <laughs> I've always buggered it up before. So this is a good stream, isn't it? Sitting here watching me download a route. That sounds very wrong. Anyway. To Aussies, that will sound wrong. Probably no one else. Uh, you sound like you want about a five-hour stream. No, there are no more no more keys for giveaway at this point. I won't be doing a five-hour stream. It's Mother's Day. As soon as my wife gets back from work, we'll be going to her mum's, I expect. Do you know that um, service? Do you remember me? We'll give that one a try. Let's see how we go. Because this won't be much longer. I'd play them some music for the meantime, but it'll probably get done for copyright, so I won't. Well, I don't know how long you'd have to wait, Chicago. When Dovetail want me to do something, they will um, get me to do something. But until they want me to do something, there's not much I can do about it. It's not automatic. 
So you think the Chicago thinks the runaway is 67E and 67R. Does that ring a bell? Do you remember me? <laughs> here you are watching Australian internet in action here. Mind you, this limitation in speed is mostly steam because I can go a lot faster than that. <laughs> so it's steam slowing us down here. Nearly there. 87, 88, 89. This is when it crashes. So for people who have joined the stream later, if you haven't all gotten bored watching this download, I um, play. Have been, uh, am looking for a Clinchfield member of personnel. Could be an engineer, conductor, brakeman, whatever. Dispatcher. Horseshoe curve. So you reckon it's 67E that dies? I assume that's an ES44 one. Eddie Stone to Chicago Ethanol. I finished that one, so it couldn't be a, a runaway. Uh, Ferro Mario says he knows a couple of other YouTubers that use something called Epidemic Sound. You have to pay a subscription, but I believe they have a ton of music variety. Yeah, you can. You can actually play YouTube's music too. They've got stuff, but I just don't. And uh, Chicago says, no, actually 67 eggs. It's actually crude oil empties coming off the NS in Schiller Park Road, Illinois. Well, it's not. It's an ethanol service from Eddystone to Chicago. It's on the screen. No, I don't do it again. I want to do this one that's a runaway. Does anybody know which one it is? I suspect it's probably a South Fork. Would be my bet. I'd be betting it's one of these. Baltimore to South Fork. South Fork to Baltimore, I'd be betting is that one. Or South Fork to Butler, either. Either would do it. That's ethanol too. <laughs> Do you know which one it is? Do you remember me said it was an 80 ton Top Gun freight train from Johnstown to Altoona? Problem is when you come out of the tunnel. So it's not one of these South Fork ones. And we want to do this runaway one. Is there nothing there that originates at Johnstown? That's interesting. They've all originating outside of Johnstown. Does anybody know which one it is? Let's see if I can uh, find it. TSW2 Horseshoe Curve. Do you know the most common query is still release date? Runaway. Horseshoe Curve Preview. No, I can't find anybody talking about a runaway. Nope. Oh, well. No, I need to know what service it is. Remember me, he says he's posted five times. Uh, I didn't see where you've actually posted exactly what service it is, mate. I'm just scrolling back through the chat now. Trying to find it. Or did you post about it on the forums? Is that what you meant? I don't see it in the chat, so I'm guessing you mean on the forum. Let's have a look. Train Sim World. <laughs> no. Did I spell that right? Yeah, I did. 
curve, 64E. So that one says it's a slideshow. This guy says the fans don't spin around. They do on PC, dude. You just need a more powerful machine. And I'm assuming it's on PC. Oh, it could be on anything. It's getting kicked out. It's 18N. Uh, what else have we got? Container glitches, little review, current course you have issues. It's small, but it doesn't matter. She could have red lights, broken trophies. She could thirds, short thoughts. I don't really see anybody talking about runaways. This person who's talking about the flowers raising and die as you approach and leave, that's in every single route. 509, beautiful, thank you. Shire Oaks to Baltimore Coal. I'm not seeing anything either. Here we go. All right. So let me... Uh, no, I bother whacking the record button. I'll get it out of the stream later. Go via location South Fork. Okay, let's start setting up. Air brake. Cut in, lead, save, exit. And that's pumping up happily. Let's get a reverser in. Let's get some headlights on. Let's get a gen field on. Gauge lights, crosswalk lights. We don't need back headlights. Could turn on the alerter, but I'm not going to. We are a short hood lead. Number lights on. There's nothing else I need to turn on on this one, I don't think. And our trip thing is already set to zero, so that's fine. We've got a conductor over there. Let's have a look. Yep. Well, because we know they're not going to do any work. No, can't get to the switch. All right. Just open a window. There you go. Enjoy the fresh air. Still can't get to the switch. I thought I could turn those heaters on. I'm sure I've done that before. Are we ready to go yet, brakes? How are we doing? Let's have a look. Are we in emergency? What? Ah, oh, I haven't released them. That'd be why. Now it'll pump it up properly. There it goes. Whoosh! And do you remember he says when you get to the slide you'll never slow it down unless the update yesterday fixed it this service shows how weak the dynamic brakes are all right let's give it a crack we're not quite ready on the back yet but let's give it some grunt anyway oops might actually help if i put it in forwards Trying to move, but it can't yet. How big is this train? Let's have a look. It is 84 and 10, 11,000 11, tons. That should be all right. Got three. You know what I didn't do? You know what I didn't do? Let's go back to that. Go back to that. In fact, I am going to, because I didn't do this right at the start, and I know it'll stuff everything up, I'm going to turn on my happy little crew down the back. 
because I probably didn't. Right, now let's do it properly. Uh, it's a DISP button, isn't it? Banking com is now on. Now let's do the same things again. Because if you don't do it first in this route, it doesn't work. Now, let's give it two notches here. And let's just quickly, while that's doing its thing, go down the back. And that is our only locomotive. So let's have a quick look in the window. We have a reverser and we are in notch two, so banking com is working. So we only have four locomotives for 11,000 tonnes. It's a bit light. We'll see. Am I actually in forwards? I am. It's trying to move, but it's going backwards. Let's go another notch. Hope I don't get wheel slip now. Come on, you can do it. More power. Yes, we're now going forwards. Now that we're moving, let's grab another one. When other people have run it, do you remember me? Do you know if they turned on the banking com before they did anything else? Because on this train, if you turn it on after you've done anything else, it will not work at the back. I've put a fair few hours into this route. You wouldn't know because it's not in the public version. It's in the, the beta version. But I can't say I know it. You're getting better at it. Oh, I wonder what you were talking about for a moment there, Chicago. <laughs> I read your other other one. He's talking about a runaway from 1947. It's very unfortunate when those events happen. A runaway in steam is probably considerably easier than running away in diesel. Because steams don't have any kind of dynamic braking. That's really interesting, do you remember me? Oh well, we'll see how it goes when we get there, I guess. We've got a bit of a climb ahead of us before we do. I think to lessen that time, I think I might just ignore the yard speed limits too. Let's crank it. a bit quiet. Is that better? 
not as quiet now. Yeah, trains versus people is never very good. I'm going to run this service about as fast as it'll go, let me go until we actually get to the um, near the top of the hill and then I'll bring it back to the right speed. Well, hopefully. <laughs> but so far it's not letting me go faster than the speed limit anyway. We're only doing 25. We are getting full power. Do we have all of our locos actually running? Let's just... No, I don't want the back locomotive. I want the front one. Aren't you actually running? You are in run. And you do appear to be producing power. But not as much as the front one. And how about you? You're in run. You're set up correctly and you are producing power. All right then. Oh, this one's dropped its effort as well. But we're picking up some speed now. In Chicago says both... Uh, Locos from that Red Arrow Run Array were uh, scrapped, which isn't that surprising. Most locomotives that run away and come off the tracks don't survive the experience. It's unusual that they get repaired. It does happen. Do you remember me, says, when you get up to the AR and UN Tower helper loop at Galitzin Tunnel, track one, otherwise known as the slide, you may want to save game as you will find the slide to overtake you. It's interesting looking at this mixed train. I um, saw some people commenting both in preview chat and on the forum who were quite vehement that you'd never get a mixed train like that. But I found a video of a mixed train just like that on Horseshoe Curve. <laughs> but they do exist. Uh, Chicago, the reason they don't repair them is once you've bent the frames of a steam locomotive, or you've bent the boiler of a steam locomotive, it's dead. There is no repairing it. The only way you could bring it back is melt it down and make a new one. Because those components just too critical. And we have got a little while to actually get up the hill. Yeah, thanks, do you remember me? It's the American name for a mixed train. Here a mixed train is actually slightly different. A mixed train here is passenger and, and freight together, or goods as we call it. We use both words. Freight trains, goods trains, interchangeable here. Wasn't this meant to be a coal train? Why is it white? Extra special white coal. Even more carbon monoxide in every kilo.
I think you'll find, Chicago, that after a runaway wreck or a collision wreck train to train, it would be very unusual to repair a diesel as well. If they have superficial damage because they hit a truck or a car, then yeah, they'll normally get repaired. The difference, I suppose, is a diesel's unlikely to be completely scrapped, even if it's totally written off. Because the components could be used in other diesels. There is a lot of them. Here comes the tail ender. Hi, Charlie. Let's go find a nice rail fan spot. Nice shady tree to sit under. Here we go. Yeah, it is true. Do you remember me? There's not a lot of truly state track on railways. going around a corner. Okay. I just crashed myself into a train. Hmm, we might call up, pull off a cam here. Maybe. Let's see if we can do it. No one driving that train. Where did I go? Oh yeah, I'm out here with a camera. Yeah, this will be my last run, Ferramero. But it'll be a while. I think it's about an hour of service. So it'll be a little while. It's cool to know the difference, why they're called Tons is... It's quite cool. I think the only rotating unloaders we have in Australia are on a mining railway in Western Australia. And it's basically these locomotives and probably very similar cars. can I get Just having a quick fish by the river you know DTG's other game it's a bit of a um, not so hot texture right there it's a bit shit but anyway that's okay. Yeah, there's quite a lot of dams across this river. Let's sit on a rock. Why not? Rail fans will sit anywhere. People are going to see the stream title of Clinchfield and drop in and go, that's not Clinchfield. What's this guy on? Thinks he's in Clinchfield. Well, 
Remind me when I get up near Galitzin to start recording. Just so I don't have to download a 10 gig stream video later to get it. Well, you could be in off the rails mode. I could be, yes. But I don't think Clinchfield is this bright or this smooth. I'm a bit sick of looking at hoppers. So many of them. Oh, missed a bridge shot. Sad now. Oh, here's our little tipple. Oh, we've got another train coming too. Awesome. And here's a good rail fan spot. Actually, you know what I'll do? I'll sit here. That'll do it. We'll have two trains in a moment. Whoop, container whacked me. Will it hit me? No. Yeah, Johnstown's been flooded quite a lot, hasn't it? Do you remember me? Yeah. Sounds like I just achieved an objective. Maybe I should turn the HUD back on. Go via Galitzin, 18 miles. So 36 mile an hour, that should be about 10 minutes. Yeah, mankind tends to learn the hard way that um, nature usually wins. Just to be different. Oh, there's the end of our train. Coming past the South Fork Branch. There's some really excellent um, creek and river work on the South Fork Branch. So if you're ever on the branch, I really encourage you to um, jump off when you get to a bridge and go have a look. And here's a sewage treatment plant, I'm guessing, or a mine tailing plant, one or the other. It's probably sewage treatment. Mmm, poo water. I'm surprised there's not a collision on the surface of that. And do you remember me? He says track one down the slide is very challenging as you think to break immediately, but don't until you exit the tunnel and start crossing the bridge. I don't like our chances of actually getting up to the speed limit. We've been sitting on 37 for quite a while now. This might be a good spot to watch the train. Can I get up the top? No, I can't. Ooh, maybe I can. Maybe I can. I kind of can. Kind of. I can't really get into the bridge, but kind of. That'll do. I'm definitely on default LOD settings. Look at the loads pop in. Train loader empties going the other way. Look at my loads pop out too.
It always sounds really funny when you do this. Anybody think I'd like this kind of camera angle? Got a little bit too close to one of them then. He's got no helpers. Galitzin's still 18 miles away. I wonder if I've got the circus overlay turned on. I can't remember. Should have seen it, I guess. Oops, wrong way. This one's a road bridge. Sit on the side of the road in this bush. Yeah, I think you would, Ferramero. If you were really standing between two trains, you'd have to be... Um very brave and at least a little bit stupid but sticking a camera in there is all good as long as you don't mind never getting a camera back which could certainly happen hmm strange yard there's our train Remember me, says American railroads normally have more power than they need. Which is a good idea. It's a ridiculously bright day, isn't it? Hmm. On both sides of the road. Okay. Must be a racetrack. Where's this in the route? It's uh, Wilmore. Eleven miles to Galitzin. And a fast cruise down the hill. We've made it up to 50 mile an hour. I'm impressed. In Australia, we have the major freight organisations that tend to run modern power like this. But we also have a lot of little ones like Southern Short Haul Railroad, 
who run stuff from the 1950s for the most part. Their lash-ups can be really interesting. Lots of heritage machinery. Yeah, normally the engineer, or I should, should step back. Um, do you remember me? He says that locomotives often pull more units to spread out their traction motor mass for better mobility and not all units are active, only using the power needed. That's normally managed by the um, engineer in the lead train using DPU functionality. Distributed power unit, which is not supported in this game. So I have to try and keep the train under the speed limit heading down the slide. All right. Still got a little while to go though. Got to get to the top of the hill yet. No, I do not have the circus turned on because that's where it would be. When I get up to Galitzin, I'll turn the whole hut back on so I know what they actually are. For the people who are watching now who've joined the stream, which a couple just did, we're not doing Clinchfield anymore, we're on Horseshoe Curve. We're running Service 509, which apparently has a penchant to run away after Gullickson. So I thought I'd give it a go. It sounded like fun. At the moment we're still climbing up the hill, we're not terribly far from the top now. And we're currently cruising along at 37 mile an hour. and I'm about to get hit in the face with a breach. Donk. That would really hurt. And do you remember me is recommending saving as I start getting closer, so I'll do that up at Galitzin. Bridge shot. It's only a road bridge. And the cars are on the wrong side of the road too. And where is this one in the route? I'm just checking because I'll report to you. So that's a Cassandra. Very good.
yellow signal coming up. I like these fences up here, the rock fences. They're cool. I don't know why they exist on this side of the rails, though. Because there's not really any cliff there. But they make sense on this side. Fifty mile an hour for freight. I don't think we're in any danger of getting anywhere near that, personally. And do you remember me? Think expects that the uh, service either needs better dynamic brakes or two more locomotives. We will see. Someone just rang my phone from a private number and didn't leave a message, so I'm going to assume that's a scammer. I should have answered it. Not on air, that would be funny. Bridge. That's a good shot. Good enough anyway. Be better like that. A little bit of stuttering going on, but the frame rate's pretty excellent, nearly 90 weird that we're getting stuttering. And do you remember me says, watch it in Crescent with the switches as sometimes the game loves to have you change tracks for no reason and speed changes. Yeah, I expect given this is a yellow signal, that's probably exactly what's going to happen to us. But at 26 mile an hour, I'm not too worried about that. Let's go up and have a look in fact. This is that little tiny town, isn't it? Yeah, too far away. <laughs> That's often the way, I guess. Yeah, if you're struggling to pull up some decent speed going up the hill, I mean, this is only a 1% gradient, it's not a very heavy gradient, then, um, yeah, getting down the other side might just be a tad interesting. mustn't be a collision on that bridge pylon because it didn't upset my camera. There's a bit of a steep road. Dump master that people don't know how to put things in. I 
five miles to Galitzin. Almost the summit. Yeah, well, I'm actually losing speed at the moment. Very slowly, but I definitely am. when we started on this hill we were doing a bit over 30 now we're down to 25 we call trains like this block trains where every carriage is the uh, same thing Oops, didn't honk for the road crossing, naughty me. Let's get the tree in shot. There we go. Bit of a rail fan moment. Oh, it doesn't help that I've got the rail driver turned on still, does it? Oh, another yellow signal. That'll be some strangeness happening in Crescent, no doubt, since we're almost there. Four miles to Galitzin. So we have a solid yellow on this one. And some... Bags of coal for no readily apparent reason. That's okay. Oh, there's the train. It's finally started to draw it. We've lost a bit more speed. We're down to 24 mile an hour now. Do you remember me? We'll be right back. He's just set me up for a crash and he's running away. <laughs> this is where the hobos would live. Any more trains up here in Crescent? Let's go find that caboose. Just let the train keep going by itself. It's going flat neck. It can't hurt anybody. We are coming into Crescent. It's as high as I can get. There's our next signal. Some power in the yard, we could steal that. What's in the little classification yard up here that the game doesn't seem to use? Just some covered hoppers and a couple of SDs. And there's this extra track that's kind of like a ski jump just launches off across the other tracks. The caboose is around here somewhere, isn't it? Or is that at the next... No, it's at the next town, isn't it? Well, this is weird. Bit of extra track. That's where your inbound and outbound grains come from. Yeah, cool. Sounds like an industry where they just bash things for a living. People at work. Where? I see no people. No worky. Oh, it's 
go back to our train. Church action over in the middle of nowhere over there. Big one. Two point seven miles to Galitzin. Yeah, about to drop another mile. Right on the verge of 23, 24. Yep, there we go. Welcome to Sunny Crescent, folks. Two miles to the summit. And the gradient's getting steeper. No doubt we are changing tracks just up here somewhere for the hell of it. Back again, Chicago. There we go, heading over, possibly over to track one. We're not far off my favourite rail fanning spot on this route. I usually use it going the other direction. I actually don't play a lot of services going this direction. Ooh, I'm going way too fast. Oh well. Tough. Look at that snake up there changing tracks. Apparently I should only be doing 15 mile an hour at the moment, but you know, I'm doing 23. Because I'm a rebel. Do you remember me? Says the Red Arrow Rex side is the first big right hand curve down the slide called Bennington Curve. Right hand side, after you leave the tunnel and pass over to the bridge, Red Arrow speed was 37 miles an hour. Bonus. Faster than me, so far. As we go over the top, I will be bringing my speed down to the limit. But I'm just minimising the time it takes to get up to Galitzin still. So I'll leave it running too quick for now.
Yeah, but I wouldn't try and run at 25 mile an hour because you've got no buffer when things start going wrong. I think as I cross the top of the summit, I probably want to be going no faster than about 15. You try and run a freight downhill at the speed limit, that's usually when things turn to poo. And you end up needing new underpants, if nothing else. Oh, that's why I'm getting me hungry. It's nearly lunchtime. That means my wife will be back from work soon. <laughs> just to make you happy and You probably both have different information sources, so don't be too concerned about it. My speed's down to 15, so I just want to hold it at that. We haven't quite reached the summit yet. No, Ferramero, I'm not trying to crash it. I want to see if I can get down the hill. I want to see if I can do it. I probably brought the speed down a little early, to be honest. I'm still losing speed. But that's okay. We're at the summit. The summit's just before the tunnel, if I remember right. Yeah, we're starting to flatten out. But of course, all of that back there is still going uphill. We're now on the downhill gradient, but only the locomotives are, not the rest of the train yet. But we are starting to pick up speed.
Now, reality would be with about an 11,000 tonne train, mind you, it's only 5,000 real tonnes, but uh, that would still be going uphill. And I shouldn't really be picking up speed yet because only my locomotives are over the top. But I am picking up speed. Why oh, don't you let me into the cab? Okay, something bad's happened. I can't get into the cab. Looks like I'll be sitting outside for this one, folks. So I'm powering off. I hope I can at least get through the cab window. Oh, now I'm outside. Okay. Outside. Inside. No, it's not letting me in the cab. Well, at least I'm not outside on the three key now. I can go up to the front and watch through the window. All right. So I'm not gaining speed yet, but I am going to go into dynamic setup, so it's ready. No, the one key's not letting me in. One or control zero, neither of them is. Might be something with because of the tunnel. But I'll be able to watch through the window, it's all good. And I don't think I powered off early, I think I powered off where an engineer would as you're approaching the summit. So we are starting to pick up speed now. So let's go into the first notch of dynamics. Not that there are notches in dynamics, but we'll forgive that. And it is picking up. So we're holding our own. We should be about to come out of the tunnel in a moment, I would think. Yep, there's the exit from the tunnel. And I might be able to get back in the chair then. It feels vaguely like we're stopping. But maybe not. No, still can't get in the cab. We'll just have to keep watching through the window. Oh, I could do it through to here. Yeah, <laughs> it won't let me in there. Uh, now I'm stuck here. I got stuck on the door. That's okay. We'll do it this way. We'll drive from outside. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's not much of my load coming over the top yet. But I am picking up speed. We are going over the top of my favourite rail fan spot. Just going to slowly bring my dynamics up. get back in yet? No, I cannot. No, don't go down the back. I'm not going to try and get in the cab anymore. It's too annoying. I'm just going to drive from out here. Yeah, five and I'm still picking up speed. Let's go up another one. I'm still picking up speed. And the gradient here is double what we came up. So I'm going to go straight up to notch 8 on the dynamics. So we now have all the dynamics applied. And we are making how much force? 80,000 pounds. Which is more than we were making coming up the hill. We're doing about 54,000 there. I've gone over 20 mile an hour, so let's do... I really want minimum reduction, and I want to bail off the locomotives. I 
think my brakes actually released then completely. When I bailed off the locos, I think it released the train brake. Let's bail off the locos again. Not, oh, there it goes. Still picking up speed. So let's just have a look at my brake gauges. Let's bring that down. There's a brake pipe still at 77, so I haven't actually got a lot of brakes on right yet. definitely want to bring my speed down. There you go, they're starting to have an effect now. So I've got almost 30 pounds of brake pressure on everywhere. I would normally bail off the locomotives, but when I did that before, it didn't go so well. We're in the 1.7% gradient now. And the worst thing about this is I will actually have to release these brakes completely. Otherwise we're going to stop. Yeah, I did break the inside review, Caramero. <laughs> right. I'm going to let it come down to 8 mile an hour and then I'm going to release the brakes. Actually, I might go down to 5 mile an hour and then I'll release the brakes. Let's try and bail off the loco brakes. If that makes any difference, no? Alright, let's release all the brakes. And we'll let that charge back up. So I have actually completely stopped. They're starting to move again now. In reality, the dynamic brakes would be having no effect whatsoever at the moment. <coughs> if, in fact, they would actually be doing that. Because I'm getting uh, a loss of traction down there, I suspect. Right now. But we're still picking up speed anyway. And it seems to have sorted out its traction problem. I'm going to let it get back up to 15 mile an hour and then I'm going to brake so that there's a, about 15 pounds on that number there, the brake cylinder. See at the moment the rear hasn't even finished charging up, it's still at 77. So if I apply them now I'll get horrible gradients. In a real train the game doesn't actually simulate gradients. Do you remember me? Says the curves bunch you up, which slows you down a bit, but tangent track makes you fly, so the tracks in front of MG Tower is the second problem. Still drifting up with the speed, so the locos at this point with their dynamics are certainly not enough to keep the speed under control. Because you'd want to see your speed being steady, not changing, but we're still drifting up. So we're not going fast by any means. Rears still haven't completely pumped up, they're only at 78. 
ideally before you put the brakes on again you really want your rears to match your um, brake pipe. I haven't applied any more brake at the moment. I was going to do it at 15, but I'm still waiting for the rears to pump. Do you remember me? says, in real life scenario, trains wouldn't be using the train brakes. Only in emergency reasons, dynamic brakes were made to keep the train moving as slow as you go. It's not unusual to actually use your train brake with dynamics, but you wouldn't be using it with a heavy brake like I had to. You might do a light upright application. All right, the rears are at 80. So now I'm going to do an application until that comes up. There we go. Just leave it sitting there. So we've got 19 pounds along the train. And even that's starting to slow me down. I'll bail off the locomotives, which loses our visibility into the actual braking that we've got, but that's okay. Hello, Metro North Railroad Productions. You want to honk the horn? All right, then. We are running service 509, coming down the slide, trying to avoid a runaway. Doing okay so far, but I have had to make a brake application before my rear had completely charged up. And I currently have 19 pounds of application, at least across the front of the train, but the rear is still sitting on 75 and the brake pipe still sitting on 80, so um, I'd suggest yeah, it's probably not that much brake supplied right now. And I bailed off my loco, which is why you can't see anything on the brake cylinder here. And hello to you too. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hold this brake application until I get down to about probably about 10 mile an hour because 5 was too much. So when we hit 10 I'll release it. Because I don't want to stop again. And we are creeping. We're actually creeping up in speed, I think, looking at the HUD. Looks like we're starting to go just a tiny bit faster. Yeah, definitely are. You can see the lines drawing on the curved part of the HUD, just next to the little needle on the master reservoir. You can see that that's getting... it's drawing more lines there. Seeing how we haven't seen any other trains for a while, this being a very busy route, I'm a little bit surprised. I generally don't stream mods because of that little blue thing in the left hand corner of my screen. But uh, when I'm playing my own, I do play with mods. Just don't record or stream with them. Funnily enough, I don't do that with Train Simulator. In Train Simulator, I run RW Enhancer all the time. Yeah, speed's definitely creeping up, so maybe I don't have to release this brake. I might just hold it. Yep, there we go, 14.
1.6 miles to the curve, so we're not very far from MG. Oh, there's a lot of really awesome mods. Just that when I'm playing the game publicly, I try and show it off in the way that it really is. It's the same as I run default any file settings. I don't do that when I play. And the reason I show it, try and show it as it is when I'm streaming with a little blue logo on, is um, not so not because I don't like mods. I do. I like them. I think they're really good. There's some very very clever and creative people around the place that make them. Beyond my capabilities, that's for sure. But the um, reason why is that about 80% of the players are on console, and they're going to want to see it the way they see it. So. The default settings on PC are about what you're going to see on an Xbox Series X and a PS5. They're pretty close. I think our speed has steadied now. It doesn't really look like we're creeping anymore, so we're doing okay. Oh, said that too soon, didn't I? Look at that. Popped up to 16. Just after I said we're not creeping and we're doing okay. Alright then. Have it your way, game. How far are we from MG? I don't think it's very far, is it? Is this MG just here? Yeah, it is. And we're still going through straight. So, No diversion for us. Let's watch our train come past from MG. Now we can sit up here and just, you know, watching it out the window. Oop, 17. Yeah, it load limits when it's completely full. I'm not sure how I broke the one cam, to be honest with you. I just popped out of the train, and now if I use Control Zero, I end up with this view. And if I hit one, I get nothing, really. It just doesn't do anything. So I don't know. But I'm back on three cam. Let's look in the window, because I need to give it some more breaks. So it's just going to watch this. Just get that to about 10 more pounds. Right, we've got six at the moment. Come on, tiny bit more. All right, let's leave it there. Don't want that to keep going up. Let's just leave that. You've gone very quiet there, Michael. Oh, it's probably because I turned my headphones down when I turned the game up. Yeah, I've heard they're taking down MG Tower. It's a bit sad. So we've now got about 22 pounds of brake pressure along the train. We've got 12 pounds in the locomotive. But we've got it. Uh, so we've come down from 90. That suggests 15 pounds, but eh, maybe not. The mass doesn't always work that way. And we are creeping downwards now on our brakes. So we're not far from the curve. Hey, I read an article about MG Tower where they said it's um, structurally unsound now. And that's probably because they abandoned it and let people smash all the windows. The MG name will continue to, to exist, but not MG Tower. Right, let's bail off the locos.
Should warn the rail fans we're coming, shouldn't we? Time to release. And the history of MG Tower from Do You Remember Me is that uh, it was put there due to the World War II wartime traffic on the curve. Well, they still use MG in their dispatches today. If you listen to the train radio from this area, they talk about MG a lot. So they still use it as an actual control point. And I am in the unfortunate position that my front of train is pretty much charged up and released and my rear is still on 75. And I'm creeping up. happy with this run so far though. Still creeping up, we're not doing too far. We're nowhere near out of control. I thought the distance counter actually did work if you set it. Speed. You know, I actually thought it did work. Maybe you have to turn the alerter on to make it work. Oops. Almost at the curve. We'll have to break again soon because we're almost back to 20 mile an hour. Rear's almost finished charging up. The rear's back almost up to 80, so. And the front is fully charged. The game doesn't simulate gradients, but if you actually did have um, braking gradients in the game, Applying the brakes before they are fully released on the rear of your train will lead to bad things happening, TM. Because you'll get some brakes applying and some brakes are releasing at the same time. And then as the wave cascades down through the train, it will only get worse. Alright, want to hold that. I wish this was a proper lapping brake. I'd be much happier with a lapping brake. I don't like automatic brakes. Yay, curve! Bye-bye, curve. How are we going up here? Yeah, look all right. Now, yeah, gradients come, and come off a little bit. Gradient back to 1.8. And I'm trying to decide what the HUD speed's doing. Still dropping. It's 
bail off the locos. So I've still got brakes applied on the train, just not on the locos. Yeah, that would be good. It would be nice to see the actual curves and gradients map for sure. PTC and Axis actually do work on this route. If you bring the um, the ACS 64 here on off the rails, it actually works. I suppose the um, MTBA would also work the F40. I haven't tried that one though. Let it get down to eight mile an hour and I'll release the brakes again. Point four miles to go. That will take a little while at this speed, though. Fortunately, there's not so much left of the uh, steep bit. Some of the trains have adjustable seat height. Not many, but a few do. I think the Rosalini train does, the RHB. Uh, the G6, I think. And the 612. I think they all do. We're picking up speed again, even though I haven't touched the brakes. Yeah, it happens occasionally, mate. <laughs> it is a bit of a long one. And it's a good thing this is almost finished too, because uh, I do have to go shortly. Still creeping up just a little. There's something I've always wondered about in this game. Will this one show? 
No, so this one shows it as zero as well, the brake cylinder. I like the banana line, it's fun for a mirror. If you've got the um, other two enhancement packs, the scenario pack's probably worth it. If you don't have the other two enhancement packs, you might be better off making your own scenarios. Because it uses the rolling stock from the other packs. It doesn't actually have to though, it's got an enhanced mode and an unenhanced mode. In the unenhanced mode it doesn't use the other packs, in the enhanced mode it does. It just gives you more rolling stock, that's all. Still increasing in speed here. But I'm hesitant to apply more brake. I don't really want to. I think I'll be content to just let it creep until it gets to about 20 mile an hour and then I'll worry about it. Hello again. So we're still creeping while I wasn't paying that much attention there. We got up to 17 mile an hour. And at the moment, so if you could believe this thing, we're normally at 90 pounds for our brake pipe when the brakes are released. So that's 78. So that's what, 12 pounds? Yeah, 12 pounds. So that's 24 in the brake cylinders, because it's, oh no, not 24, it's 30, uh, no, 30, 30 pounds in the brake cylinders, it's two and a half times. So, yeah, I think the scenario pack's worth it if you've got the other packs, definitely for a mirror. It's a fun little route, it's, it's enjoyable. Yeah, I am going to have to apply some more brake. Just take it there. Let's see how that goes. That's not really actually applied any brakes. So that didn't really do anything. So let's give it a bit more. That's better. Now we're putting some brakes on again. So we put another 10 pounds along the train. Yeah, it's about right. So we dropped another another six off there. Yeah, it's about right. Now I'm debating, do I eat in front of you people? <laughs> My wife just handed me a sublaki. Which many of you would call a gyros. But it's um, lamb with garlic and yogurt and salad -y stuff. You know, what's basically a wrap if you've never heard of one before. Do you remember me? He says he doesn't understand why the UPSD 70 ACE on this route only allows you to run as a helper or six tankers. Um, it's. I think you're probably running it in off the rails mode. And they can't really let them mix because the brake technology has changed as they've done several of the routes. And until everybody's brought into the same braking technology, mixing them's a bit weird. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So my speed is coming down again with this brakes and we've come down into the 1.4% gradient area as well. 
So I will be fairly comfortable releasing these brakes at about 10 mile an hour, I think, and let the system charge up again. Because we're off the steepest part of the route now. And you're feeling like the cookie monster. Excellent. It certainly smells very good. Alright, we're down to 10 mile an hour, so I am releasing the train brakes completely. Woo, wheel slip. It got it back though. It figured it out. Now it'll take a while to charge the train up, so the brakes are going to start coming off up the front. In fact, they already would be off now because the brake pipes at 87. But the rear's at 73, so those brakes probably still applied. So I expect us to keep creeping up in speed while those brakes are releasing up the back. One point nine per cent. I forgot about this steep bit. I thought we were off the steepest part, but we're not, are we? We're allowed to do 35 mile an hour in this section, but we're not far off a 25 mile an hour zone. But I think when we get to the 25 mile an hour zone, that's the start of the yard. So we should be pretty much off the gradient by then. green up ahead and still no other trains for ages it comes from the village birdhouse apparently the sobriety Looks like a nice one. Tastes nice. Lots of garlic. Twelve mile an hour, thirteen. Rear of the train still pumping away up to seventy five back there now. Altoona is the final stopping point, yes. Nothing goes past Altoona in the game. In reality they do. This is a Baltimore service. And the gates aren't even shut. Hey, finally another train. It's our partner in crime train. Oh, 
crossing was the fix. I think it was Brickyard that was fixed, not that one. Put on some brakes soon. Rear's almost finished pumping up. I'll let it get to 25. Gradient's slackening off anyway, it might be enough. Maybe it'll be fine. Maybe I'll leave it alone. We'll see. Let it creep up a bit more. We're pretty much off the worst of it. Still drifting up though, very slightly. I'd better get some speed off for this 25 mile an hour because that'll be a track change I expect. That is starting to slow down. And we head back into Altoona and the yellow signal. Not going to make that 25 in time, I don't think. Uh, maybe. We'll see. We're not far from the Altoona Amtrak now. I think horsepower's around before trains. Horsepower's used as a measure of tractive effort in lots of things. Oh, we are down below the speed limit. And coming into the yard. Are we set to divert here? No, we're going straight. Heading our way into Rose Yard. Altoona Amtrak up there on the left. releasing the brakes, even though most of the train is still on that steep gradient. There you go, do you remember me? Now you've seen a streamer do it. Because somehow, I don't think we're going to have a runaway between here and Rose Yard. In fact, I'll have to come off the dynamics soon or we'll stop. But at the moment, most of my load is still coming down the gradient. You can actually see the gradient in the distance there, which is kind of cool. So the majority of my load is still on the hill. So even though I'm starting to lose speed, I'll, um, I'll take the dynamics down a bit when we get down to 15. Hello V for Bitty, how are you today? I am well, thank you. Just about to finish this very long stream. It's, uh, do you remember me challenged me to try and get down the hill on a particular surface that he has seen people struggling with? And I just did, so all good. Just going to start pulling the dynamics back. I won't take them off yet. 
And yeah, railroading has been around for a while, do you remember me? A little while. probably safe to take the dynamics all the way off now. But that's part of the deal, isn't it, do you remember me? You need to have the route knowledge. So you need to know that you're going to start going downhill. And you also need to know that you um, shouldn't be trying to drive at the speed limit because that's not going to work well for you. American freights do not drive anywhere near the speed limit downhill. German ones do, but that's because their locos are cool. And their braking systems are much more advanced. They have electronic control of the brakes along the whole train, even in freight. American trains, that's limited to passenger. one point four miles we're on the outskirts of Rose Yard now which is why we've got a yellow not to mention we're going to be changing tracks soon so I might give it an initial service break just to because I expect our break expect our speed limit to come down to 15 shortly it'd be nice to get a GG1 in the game wouldn't it leave that minimum brake on so I do have to stop shortly in 1.2 miles and Ferramaro says that I should challenge the DTG squad in a 4-up challenge I feel like you will win I think they've had a community member in a challenge before I seem to recall a fair while ago but, uh, you never know what the future might bring. If it wasn't such a difficult thing to produce from a video perspective, it would be really cool to see something like 250 people playing at the same time. That wouldn't be a bad idea. There's nothing stopping us doing our own 4-up challenges too. Just agree a route and have a crack at it. I think Matt would win it because he understands US freight. Almost there. It would be fun to have them do this as a challenge. You're coming from a Series S to a Series X. That's going to be a huge change. Huge. enjoy that V, that's going to be awesome. I think you'll be very, very happy. Almost down to a thousand almost meter yard like things. starting to have an effect. I don't know if it'll stop me in time or if it'll be a little bit early. It's 
in the, the guts of Rose Yard now, so welcome along. There's a um, pair of GG1s sitting out in the uh, in the bush somewhere. I've seen a couple of videos on them. I think Matt would win this challenge for sure, Ferrero. Anybody else notice my brake pressure's dropping? <laughs> Thanks, rail driver. Big yards don't really hurt TSW2, but lots of signals do. I think we might go for a full service. And that should stop us maybe a little after the stopping point. But it is going to stop us. Accuracy is not so good. Yeah, that'd be funny if I spat it at the right at the end of it, wouldn't it, for Amaro? <laughs> And there we go. Done deal. I shouldn't say that. It could still derail now. And done. And finished. There we go. So you can do it. You can Not only can you do it, you can get a gold doing it. So I think, do you remember me? Give the other streamers a link to this one and go, like that, mate. Anyway, I'm going to go because I'm going to have some lunch and then we're going to go and visit my wife's mum, which will be good. And uh, have an enjoyable evening, afternoon, morning, whatever it is for you. Thank you very much for joining in. I think we've had uh, Chicago's Trains and Train Sim for most of it. We've had NJTE for a lot of it. We've had Do You Remember Me for heaps of it. Ferro Mero has been around for ages. V for Vitti joined us recently. I uh, had Metro North in here for a little while. So I always kind of wonder, is Metro North just the Chicago trains guy? I do wonder about that. But anyway, and we've had Michael on chat, who's still there. And who else have we had? We've got a bunch of people today. I'm sure there's some more in here somewhere. There were some other people early on, but uh, I'm not sure if they stayed or not. But uh, certainly around, there's NJTE. Oh, I should stop scrolling back and just... Uh, Put this in the edge of mystery. Oh, Mark B from New Zealand and Neil TV8 dropped in as well. Good stuff. And Jasingus, who is watching from bed, who's probably right now lying there yep. with a phone on his face, and he'll wake up in the morning and go, damn that guy. But anyway, have a great time, folks, and thanks very much for joining in, and we will see you next time. Bye. Thanks for watching, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. I always like to get your feedback in the form of likes and comments because they help me understand what you want. Give the channel a subscribe and click on the tinkly things so you don't miss out on any new stuff. And thanks for your ongoing support. And please, be safe out there.